Hello and welcome to Monday. I'm your host, Tanacho, and today we're going to be talking about Perfect Arts. The Perfect Art is a translation of the Japanese Kanzen Bogyo, and they live up to their name. A Perfect Art can be placed onto the Guardian Circle, where you can pay its cost by discarding a unit of the same clan from your hand, protecting a unit on your field from any one attack. It's a card that's so useful in Vanguard that you will likely see Perfect Arts in every deck. The question, though, is not if you should run them, and how many, and to that I answer, four. Unfortunately, they can be confusing, and it's not surprising that some deck builders have been a bit confused about perfect guards, even champions of both the Japanese and English major tournaments. It seems that while four copies of perfect guards are very common, it's not yet a universally accepted deck building rule, and some people still favor three or even two copies. There are a few misconceptions to start with, especially among newer players. The cost whereby you must discard a unit of the same clan is often seen as severe loss of card advantage. If you're not familiar with card advantage, there will be a link in the description to go learn about it. This is actually a true fact about perfect guards. They do cause a net reduction of minus two to your overall card advantage. If you were to take this kind of loss early in the game or midway through, it could easily mean losing the game later down the road. However, this principle of a loss in card advantage goes for any guarded attack. All attacks that are guarded are at least a net loss of one card, if not possibly more. But you can't eat damage all day. Since the opponent is just going to keep pressuring you forever, you have to guard sometime. It's best to guard as little as possible and as early as possible. The concern for stopping damage at all costs comes when you reach 4 or 5 damage. This is called the late game. At this point, a single unguarded vanguard could instantly end the game. Even at 4 damage, your opponent could easily check a critical trigger, which would mean your loss. This is where perfect guards come in. Vanguards have a knack for gaining obscene power, especially during that crucial period in the late game. If Dark Lord of the Abyss is attacking you for a ridiculous 46,000 power, are you going to lay down anywhere from 5 to 9 cards to try to stop it? A perfect guard can stop it with only the loss of two cards. Experienced players will know that this is not a situational play. Massive power or high critical units are commonplace in the late game of Vanguard. But again, it's not if you should run them, but how many. For most cards, how many should I run is usually dependent on the structure of the deck. Primary strategies try to maximize both themselves and anything that directly supports them. But if powerful and independently useful cards like Perfect Guards exist, then you should run the maximum legal allowance. I'd like to say I can just appeal to common sense and say, max them out, since these are game ending plays, not to be taken lightly. Although I could also try a weak argument from authority. Ahem. Perfect Guards aren't just limited to 4 copies of themselves, all units that are Perfect Guards in the deck are limited to 4. Even mixed clan decks. Bushiroad saw that they were powerful and felt that they needed to limit them. But obviously this is a stupid argument since Bushiroad isn't all-knowing or all-powerful. They could just be idiots, after all. One of the better arguments that can be made is, using four perfect guards puts you at no disadvantage to using less. If we accept this to be true, then in game theory terms, running four perfect guards dominates the strategy of running less perfect guards since running less puts the player at a disadvantage. Neither player wants to deviate unilaterally from the strategy, if both are being rational. This is the Nash Equilibrium of the Prisoner's Dilemma. If you want to learn more about game theory, see the link in the description. Unfortunately, the argument isn't self-evident, so a lot of people don't immediately accept it as true. It takes a lot of experience playing the game to realize that going from two or three perfect guards to four doesn't put you at any disadvantage. Players that haven't come to this realization on their own might assert that perfect guards clog the hand. This argument doesn't really make any sense. It's usually not backed up by more than that assertion, so there's not much to refute here except the ways that something can be clogged in your hand. Well, for a start, perfect guards are still a grade 1 unit, so you can ride them when needed. They're also still a 6k unit with a boost skill. So anything with 10k power or more can probably still create really good columns. You should also be drawing one card, and Twin Drive should be loading you up with two more. 
meaning that you'll be generating three cards per turn. The only time a perfect guard will be stuck in your hand is if you didn't guard with the other two cards properly. This goes for any odd numbered hand. As for even numbered hand, you could have two perfect guards stuck in your hand, and nothing else. However, since you can still discard a perfect guard for another's cause, it means they're still not clogging your hand. Don't allow the wonderful skills they possess to enslave your mind into thinking that this is all they can do. These cases aren't actually very common, assuming you run four copies. Assuming you have four copies, the probability that you're forced to write a perfect guard after a mulligan of three is about 8%. If you had three copies, it would be about 5%. If you only had two, it would only be 3% of the time. You can see from 4 to 3 is the biggest change, a 3% difference. And from there, 3 to 2 is less significant, only a 2% difference. These changes are statistically insignificant. For reference, the chance to damage check a given card from your deck is about 10% of the time. You are more likely to damage check the perfect card than be forced to ride it. If you want to learn more about this kind of probability, check the link in the description. While we're on the subject of probability, let's go look at the frequency of different copies. When you have a deck of 49 cards just before the game begins, there's a certain expected frequency of each card in the deck according to how many copies you run. For 4 copies, you're likely to see the card about once every 12 cards. At 3, you'll run into it about every once in 16. And at 2, you should see the copies every 25 or so cards. These all do a normal distribution, that is, each card is equally likely to appear randomly and your deck is shuffled properly. What we expect is to see 4 perfect cards twice as often as only 2 copies of it, and only a 1 to 3rd time more than 3 copies. This is a key component in frequency. In Vanguard, by the time a grade 3 hits the field, you're capable of grabbing up to 3 cards from your deck each turn. The average number of cards you want to remove from your deck at that point is usually around 9. So your turn 3 is going to remove 3 more, exactly 12. That means at 4 copies, you should be seeing your first perfect card, on average, at the start of the mid-game. From there, it's simple math. 3 goes into 12 4 times, so in 4 turns, you get another. That's usually when you're in the late game. So unless you have some nice drawing power, you're likely to only see two of your perfect guards per game if you run the max. At three copies, you start at nine and have to reach 16. Since we know that when turn three ends, the count is 12, you need about one more turn to expect to see your first perfect guard. Simple math comes. Three goes into 16 slightly more than five times. So it'll take another 5 turns after 1 turn, or turn 3. That's usually around turn 9. With the previous example, late game was already barreling down by turn 7. In other words, if you really needed that second perfect guard to survive the game, running 3 instead of 4 could leave you 2 turns behind of drawing it, which isn't ideal. You're now 2 more turns into the game than where you should have been to see your next perfect guard. The worst part is, some things aren't the average. Sometimes they deviate in the standard fashion. That standard deviation could just as easily cause you to completely miss getting a second perfect guard as it could to get you sooner. The sooner in this case is a deviation of two turns, meaning you'll end up right back where you started at four copies. Running three copies means a risk of the three outcomes being not getting it, not getting it on time, and getting it just at the nick of time. With two knots compared to a single statistical anomaly of getting it, that's not a good outcome, and it doesn't get any prettier with two copies. At that point, you need turn seven at the very least before you'll see even one perfect guard on average. Vanguard goes at a very specific pace. Being off by even a single turn to get your life-saving card could mean a loss, especially when there are so many decks capable of pulling extra criticals every second or third drive check. More especially is when you're up against ever common aggressive decks which push for damage early. These kinds of things can stop you from getting your second perfect, possibly even one. As of 11 announced Japanese sets, there have been no mono clan builds that do strictly better by running less perfect guards, not even rush decks. Even the Angel Feather decks, which commonly only run 3 because they can get it from the damage zone, 
are only doing themselves a disservice by cutting off their axes to having more perfect guards than the opponent. Bermuda Triangle's Pacifica build should especially use four, since her hand swapping ability every turn plows through one more card and gives just that much more of a chance at getting more than two perfects, or securing two against a damage intensive opponent. I can understand the sentiment, it doesn't leave much room for my other cards, but that's really like saying, I wish I didn't have so many awesome cards so I can use slightly less awesome cards. Four perfect guards can be a cemented thing in your deck. Before you do anything else, you know you need to have 16 triggers and a starting vanguard. Mark down 4 or more as perfects and the total comes to 21. If the deck strategy can't fit within the remaining 29 cards, it probably needs to be refined. If you treat your deck right, it will, on average, treat you right. So to wrap up, perfect guards should be in every deck. 4 perfect guards means that you're likely to get at least 2 of them, which you will need to stop dying. Less perfect guards means you're unlikely to get two of them, and sometimes possibly not even one. The chance that you're forced to ride a perfect guard is all but negligible, but they can still be called to boost. You also shouldn't be clogging your hand unless you guard it improperly. And after all, they will save your bacon.